And uh, just over the page, you'll see we have two simple things on which to conclude in these next few minutes. This next heading, verses 13 to 17, joyful restoration. I wonder if I could just read verse 13 again. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. Then he went to her, and the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. Now, I think the beauty of this story is the way here at the end it comes back full circle to address some of the things we saw early on in chapter 1. It's now the Lord who is renewing and restoring everything. It's worth remembering some of those early elements. First of all, as I think it's uh, on the sheet, it is from emptiness to restoration. In chapter 1, as Florence reminded us, Naomi uses this strong language as she uh, comments on her bitter feelings. And the one word that's repeated is the word empty. That's how she felt. The Lord has brought me back to Bethlehem empty. But now, at the end of the story, we notice how this is completely swallowed up by the idea of God's blessing, her life renewed and restored. This son, this uh, grandson, will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. So she returned originally, chapter 1, to Bethlehem with nothing in her hands. And now, as her mothers and grandmothers know, her hands were full. She had there the child that God had granted. The Lord had given her a family tree. So it's another picture of what the gospel is all about. The gospel is about this kind of joyful restoration. Do you remember how Paul described the work of Jesus in our lives as the Redeemer? It's about a radical restoration, a change of allegiance. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So when we come to know Jesus, we have exactly that same restoration out of darkness and into the liberating life of the Lord Jesus, out of emptiness of our lives to restoration, becoming who we should be as God's dearly loved children. So that's the first restoration, emptiness. And the second I put in on the sheet there is, it shows us a story of from prayer to fulfillment. In chapter one, maybe you remember, uh, Naomi pleaded with her two daughters in law, don't come back to Bethlehem with me, you will have no chance. Go back to your homeland, where perhaps you'll find a husband and have children. She prayed for the Lord's blessing on them. And it was a demonstration of her love, even at the extreme moment in her life, if you remember it, in chapter 1. And here in chapter 4, what has the Lord done? He's answered that prayer. The Lord had given Ruth a son. The Lord had blessed Ruth the foreigner, he'd, his hand had been at work. And so now Ruth and Boaz, they weren't just starting a family, they were rescuing a family. It was part of this work of joyful restoration, as we see prayer being fulfilled. The other little note uh, we should remember is it is from chaos to king, this story. And it's comparing the very first verse Ruth chapter 1, verse 1, with the very last verse here in uh, chapter 4. From chaos, why do I say that? Well, right at the beginning it says, in the days when the judges ruled. That's where the story begins. And that was a period of godlessness. You remember the, the refrain in Judges? Everybody did what was right in their own eyes. Uh, it was a completely chaotic situation. The final word in the book of Ruth, what is the final word? Well, actually, it points to their great king, David. So the book points to God's rule through David, and ultimately, of course, to the rule of our Lord Jesus. So that is a remarkable shift, do you agree with me, from chaos to king in that little story. Now, if you look at that final verse, it reminds us of God's 
resolution, the restoration, the story of beginning with a world out of control, and yet by God's purposes, finally pointing towards Jesus himself, the Lord of the universe. What a remarkable little story. Well, it's that resolution of the story that began with that world out of control that points to Jesus that brings us to the last point, universal blessing, verses 18 to 22. This, then, is the family line of parents. Now, I wonder when you read chapter 4, and you come to this bit, when it was read to us earlier, is it, what, why on earth end the beautiful story with a whole list of names? It was a very strong, a very unusual thing to do. It's such a beautifully constructed story, why end it like this? But this closing genealogy, which we read here, reminds us again of God's purposes. That's why I've said we should trust God's purposes. Because it, it describes how God is at work in every generation. From one generation to the next, he is bringing about his purposes. Actually, he is bringing out his purposes ultimately for all humankind. There is hope for a redeemer that will not just restore a single family, and then not just restore a nation, but will restore people of every nation. So as we close uh, thinking about this book of Ruth, we remember it, it has several signals to the Lord, the Redeemer. Uh, first of all, in the story of Ruth, we see there is Boaz. He's the guardian, the, the kinsman Redeemer. He's the person by blood who paid the debt, who redeemed the land, and who married Ruth. So he's a wonderful picture of redemption, of a redeemer. And second, there's no doubt that Ruth should be seen as a redeemer. Better than seven sons to Naomi. So for Naomi to survive, Ruth had to lay down her life. You remember the story yesterday. She left her home, think of the Lord Jesus, she left her home, she became poor so that others could be rich. She was a servant redeemer in this story. And third, there's another redeemer. Did you notice? Verse 14, the reference to the newborn child, Obed. Now, Obed means servant, or possibly the Lord's servant. And the friends in verse 14 say, Praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. So those are three clear signals in the story. Boaz and Ruth and now this baby Obed. God's purpose is to redeem. Naomi, well, she was now the person who would benefit from that redemption. Uh, through Obed, she had children, so to speak, and someone caring for her in her old age. And as we've seen, the narrator deliberately makes the connection, this onward line of names to King David and onwards to Jesus himself. In fact, centuries later, isn't it intriguing, in the same small town of Bethlehem, people heard the angels say something very important. In the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So God's purpose through these two women, Naomi, and Ruth was to bring about the birth in that same town, ultimately, of Jesus, the rescuer, the redeemer, the saviour of the world. And in that little town of Bethlehem, Bethlehem means house of bread, God had met the emptiness of Naomi, and now through Jesus, he would bring the bread of life to everyone who turns to him. It comes full circle to Bethlehem. So, my brothers and sisters, as we reflect on our own lives, as we said on Friday night, in a world of turmoil, a world of uncertainty, not dissimilar to some of the challenges which Naomi faced, in that context where we now live, we know we can trust God's purposes completely. This story assures us this time and time again. You can entrust your life and your family and your future to the Lord, our rescuer and our Redeemer. I've just been in Northern Ireland and uh, uh, I met um, uh, the family members of a man called William McConnell. I don't know if you remember his name. He was the Deputy Governor of the Mays Prison in Northern Ireland and he was assassinated. Um, he was a very fine Christian and um, I read his testimony. 
in a meeting before he was assassinated, a Christian service, he gave his own testimony. And this is what he said. I have committed my life, my talents, my work and action to Almighty God in the sure and certain knowledge that however slight my hold on him may have been, his promises are sure and his hold on me complete. So we will meet him in heaven. Uh, here's a man who trusted God's good purpose. So dear friends, shall we do that more and more? Uh, we can trust the person whom we know fully. The more we come to know the Lord, the more we can trust him. On the service sheet, there's a lovely sentence from Romans 8. And uh, as I finish, I'd like to suggest we read this together aloud. A lovely expression of confidence in God's good purposes. Romans 8, verse 28, together. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose.